Welcome to this new primer on digital architectonics. Uh, this is a comprehensive version of the uh, work and uh, the teaching I developed uh, the last two or three years and which is available in detail on YouTube on, with about 100 hours on lectures and uh, tutorials. So, but now with Corona, we uh, developed a new format because lectures are always about uh, improvisation and needs uh, feedback and I'm very unhappy uh, just talking uh, to a computer in a, in a freestyle way like in, uh, in a lecture. So if in principle content is available on, uh, on internet, we need a more comprehensive uh, thing. It, it should not take too long because you can go back and forth. It should be much more uh, connected to the original sources. You should be interactively uh, able to, to work with it. And uh, this is what I uh, uh, present to you uh, this semester. So it's comprehensive. It's a recap of, uh, of the whole story. I want to pack it into one uh, semester, which is uh, quite uh, challenging. And I want to give content to the internet and actual discussions with you uh, uh, to the lectures and the seminars. So therefore we will have discussions and live discussions uh, present or via Zoom remote. And we have the content on pre-recorded uh, YouTubes. So what is the motivation? to talk about uh, digital architectonics, whatever it is, in our specific way. And what can you expect with these lecture series? So me, I'm architect and I'm uh, quite familiar because all my life I'm in computer science, in architecture. I never was interested in uh, uh, computer graphics this much. I like graphics, but I think this is not the key question in architecture. Architecture is about jointing, as the name tells, joining things. And this is not the result presented as uh, graphics. Presenting it in, in virtual reality, for example, or in game engines, or with these uh, glasses or in high resolution uh, renderings is a kind of rhetorics. It's not the key of, uh, of the architecture it's, itself. I think we can address that's very important. This is what you can expect. Um, that uh, I think addressing questions of artificial intelligence is the key to a kind of digital architecture, of, of understanding and making architecture uh, for today. So, this is our motivation for this class, or for our kind of teaching. We succeeded some in 2006, uh, winning a prize in an architecture competition with a fully automatic architectural design. So this is not spectacular. We can find it uh, uh, here, so it's online. And uh, we have it here in a book of our, all our experiments. We had been very impatient. We did a lot, all the range of things what you can do in architecture. We covered that the first 10 years of our research at ETH. So, and uh, for example, this Turing test is, is, is here. These are, it's the it's development from, uh, from a layout which is not working properly to a properly working uh, layout. So you see all the generations, three models, and this is an example not the, not the uh, example of the competition, another example of what it might look like. So the architecture is not too spectacular. I think spectacular is that you can win a Turing test. So you, so that, and uh, which means 
anonymously, experts in architecture are not able to, to distinguish between human-made architecture and machine-made architecture. So we had been very proud with that. Oh, there's all the, also there's a, there's a Chinese version of this book. Available. Good. <coughs> so we had been very proud of it, of course, being able and succeeding in, in this uh, with this technology. But surprisingly or not, nobody liked it. The students didn't like it. My colleagues, there was no discussion possible with my colleagues. Maybe today it's a little different. It was 2006, 2008, we worked on that. And even companies, so architectural offices, uh, developers, real estate agents, and so on, nobody. Uh, uh, yeah, they all had been afraid of touching this kind of technology or these kind of arguments. This was a little surprising and or frustrating. There was a way, the chance, yeah, so we had to decide whether to go to underground and just make it a hundred times a year. Or, and this is what we did, ask the principal, the, the principal question and our class will follow this question. And there is no answer for it. That's very important. So what is architecture if machines successfully can do what we think architecture is? So that's our question. And for the last 10 years, uh, we thought about that in principles of architecture, in theory, in philosophy, in mathematics, and computer science. So we wrote a series of books. They're available in this environment. And if I want to summarize in, 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 in two hypotheses uh, what all this is about and why architecture is important today, then we say, first say, the first hypothesis is the 20th century is a digital renaissance in strong correlation to the 15th and 16th century uh, in Western culture. And code today, so coding, especially the lambda calculus, and we will focus on that and explain that, what it is, plays a role of drawing in renaissance. So as in renaissance, uh, the architecture is not thinkable without drawings or the perspective drawings, which hadn't been developed before. I would say 20th century from 19 or 1880 to 19, 1920 on is not thinkable without the idea of coding. So I don't think coding is a phenomena of a post war from 1916, 1918 on, or now with uh, the Internet of Things, with mobile uh, devices from 2000 on, and so on. Now, I don't not think it's, it's a recent phenomenon. Th it's a key problem, it's not the actual technical implementation. It's a, it's, a, it's a certain way of thinking, and this came around 1880 to 1920. And the most prominent thing in, uh, is uh, quantum physics, which is quite, uh, quite different from, um, uh, from the uh, physics uh, and the mechanics uh, as we know and learn at school and uh, uh, from Newton, Newton-like uh, physics. It's radically different, but uh, uh, similar. That's interesting uh, <coughs> of that. So it's, it's and in architecture, it's uh, just what we experience in art and architecture around 1920 with the international style, with Bauhaus and so on. I think this is architecture of code. So we will go in, uh, in detail to that and we can learn of that and we emancipate from all these historicity of reading with Gideon or Panofsky and so, uh, trying to bind these things back, back in these old schemes. If you think the international style of architecture uh, in a quantum way, I think uh, this is adequate. And this directly emancipates you from these uh, very dominant uh, um, 
presence of computing and cybernetics today. So therefore, I think there's no architecture thinkable without drawings in Renaissance. And I think everybody would agree. And as it is in the Renaissance, I would say there's no thinking without code about architecture today. What you expect, should, uh, what you can expect uh, is, it's not a simple story I want to tell you this semester. And therefore you have to be a little patient. So all the implications of quantum is there's no cause and effect. You know that from physics. So therefore it's the learning is not that I can tell you step by step and then there is a kind of theory. There is not a theory what I can tell you. So it's more like learning a new language or going to swim, uh, learning to swim. Just jump into the water and try to swim and or trying to ride a, a bicycle or learning a new instrument. So you have to train it. You have to get used to it. You have to start to embody a new skill. So that's what all this is about. Therefore it's a lot of repetition and in the beginning for you it must be super strange like the first time in cold water and over time you will uh, get uh, used to it and then you are different with a different set of skills and you can articulate your architecture in a different and I think in a, most, uh, in a more adequate way. So I can just to that this is not an esoteric setup. Uh, I want to refer to, um, to this excitement all around. So, and I think we as architect, we have to address these things. And we as architecture, if we learn how the people, our predecessors and the masters of Renaissance did it and they faced, I can tell you, they can, they, they faced very similar problems. So <coughs> uh, I want to give you some references and, I, and about the hustle today and what we are. So what I, as an European, I really uh, are very astonished about the strong belief in California, especially in California, about the innocence of technology. So, and the, and the principal suspicion of human inter towards uh, human intellect. So, which implies always, not explicitly, but implicitly, that if you decide and not the machine, implicitly, then you get dirty. So, and then you have these crazy uh, stores look like these, these crazy churches. So they are super clean. And if you, yeah, if you go there, it's okay. And you're free. You have to f go there, you follow, it's clean. You don't have to touch things. It's not dirty. You clean yourself and it's a kind of uh, a salvation. It's a promise of salvation, touching it. So that's very strange for me as a, a European. But on the other hand, this is how it works. So I'm struggling all the, our theory is struggling around this, uh, this, this question, how the hell does this work? Why does it like that? So, or how is it possible? It's very slow. Mark Zuckerberg. This random boy gets this powerful. This is a five hour testify. Uh, <laughs> before the Congress, American Congress of Mark Zuckerberg. And if you look at him, 
he is an innocent, he plays an innocent boy. How, or, and I, I, I don't get this, I would not say that in Europe a figure like that can be uh, uh, this, uh, this powerful. So it's interesting and it's challenging for me. How does it work that somebody like him got this powerful? Or our dream, this is more European, the, the dream of WikiLeaks, that transparency is for the good. Look him, at him as, as uh, at Assange. Or more recent, with uh, Greta Thunberg, this, uh, the hatred and the anger that things are not innocent, that they're dirty. And this, uh, that we, we, we say, it's a principal innocence of, of, of youth we should follow. I think to get that in proportions, so I don't say this is nonsense, so it, it's, this is a challenge. But I would say today these things are not in proportion. And we will have to learn, and this is a, the noble role of architecture is to bring these things into a proportion and to domicase, uh, domesticate uh, these things in a way that we say, okay, this is civilized. That's the motivation of uh, our class. And it's a plaidoyer for the very for 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 for, for architecture and playing a substantial uh, role in today's world. Okay, hope you find it interesting, and we'll follow the other tutorial.